Okay, in this video I'll explain how raids work, how to deal with most damage in raids, how to debuff bosses, and what items to use, and much more. I'll be trying out the new YouTube's chapter system, so if you want to skip to one or see what we have, timestamps will be in the description. Every 28 days a raid will occur, the raid ship will drop on Tuesdays at around 9am CST. This is when the brackets begin to form. If you saw my pit guide video, you might know what brackets are. But if you haven't, brackets contain their own ranks and raid boss. The raid boss will have differing HP from other brackets, so some brackets will kill the boss way sooner than others, which can make the time you have to fight them way less. Which is why later brackets are usually easier. You join a bracket by logging in when the raid is active. The earlier you log on, usually the harder the raid is, and the sooner the raid boss dies. The safe time to log in is usually around Friday when the raid boss emerges from the raid ship. The ship drops and opens around 9am CST on both Tuesday and Friday. Now that you know when the raid starts and how to get into an easy raid, let's get into the next issue you might encounter. Permits is the currency raids operate on. You'll need two permits to fight the boss or you'll need to spend three tickets to fight it. When you're in a rush, you might just spend the three tickets, but if you want to be a cheapskate, you'll need permits. To get more permits, you just need to fight and win with other players. The game considers it a win if the player runs or if all their mortys are dazed first. You might have heard win if the player runs and thought about automating it, and you'd be right! You can automate collecting permits with a very simple clicker layout. All you need is an alt to fight and run from, and you'll be swimming in permits. A few minor details about this, you need the alt to be in the same level bracket, they can't be friends, and they can't battle through the tablet. Sometimes you might run into permanent droughts when doing this, but that's normal. This method does work, however if you don't have an alt or can't get one, join my discord in the description. Me or my members can help you grind for those sweet, sweet permits. In raids, it's very important to understand buff stacks. The max buff is plus 6, and the lowest is negative 6. All Mortys start with a stack of 0. Weak buffs give plus 1, medium gives plus 2, strong gives plus 3. Debuffs are the same, they're just negative. So weak debuffs give negative 1, medium debuffs give negative 2, and strong debuffs give negative 3. The percentage, the percentage they debuff the stat can be very complex, so I won't be explaining that. However, to get the best out of a buff slash debuff, you'll want to understand how to fully debuff and buff. You'll want to have the raid boss to have negative 6 stacks and everything you can debuff. And you want your mortys to have plus 6 on attack and possibly plus 6 on defense if the raid level is high. The only item you should ever use is a pure plutonic rock. They should only be used on your main attackers. I'll be explaining what those are soon. There are a few reasons why you should not use anything but plutonic rocks. Since this is, since this is the basic on raids, we will not go into those. This question can be very complex or simple depending on the depth you want. For this video's sake, you won't be going very in depth. There's three main classes for raids. Debuffers, side attackers, and main attackers. You usually want to have one to two debuffers. Any more just clogs your team up and loses you major damage. The main three stats you want to debuff is attack, defense, and evade. Anything else you debuff will just add extra damage and survivability. If you want to fully debuff the boss, these are the debuffs you want. Attack, defense, evade, accuracy, and paralysis. Poison doesn't work on bosses, and you will always go first in the raid, so debuffing speed does nothing. There's only three Mortys I know of that can debuff all that by themselves. Cubism, Princess, and Queen. And since there's only three Mortys that can fully debuff the boss by themselves, and they're all paper, you'll see why you want two debuffers. Good debuffers will be able to deal decent damage and debuff. A good example of this is Supernova Party. They have a medium debuff of accuracy and defense in one move. They also have a strong attack buff and a hundred and... Oh, and a 110 power rock move that also paralyzes. The moves you'd want for Supernova Party is Sing, Mind Numbing Hello, Party, ex and Exploding Sun. This is just an example. You can look through Mortys and find your own Mortys and choose their moves, but Supernova Party is just a good example. I have the website in the description. Make sure the debuffer Morty you choose 
can get all their debuffing AP out. But once you have chosen what you will use to debuff, this can be very simple as an attack, defense buff, or as complex as having all of them. Side attackers are probably the simplest part of your raid team to prepare. All they need is an attack buff and at least two typed moves. A good example of the perfect side attacker is Trover. He has a strong attack buff and a lot of powerful rock moves, including the strongest type rock move in the game, Suplex. However, multi-attack moves usually do more damage, but having a side attack or three typed attacks and one attack buff is usually what you want to aim for. Side attackers are usually used to buy time when you are waiting for the item lockout to end, so you can use another plutonic rock on your main attacker. Speaking of main attackers, main attackers are like side attackers, but they have a regeneration move. This will be used to let them attack longer without needing to use any healing items. The better the regeneration move is, the easier your main attacker will survive. One of the best examples of a main attacker is Gotron. He has a powerful multi-attack rock move, a powerful regen, and you can choose between Gotron regroup or combustion for an attack buff. Gotron also has a defense buff you could put on for those tough high level raids. There are many main attackers out there so you could just ask around or look for your collection and you'll definitely find some. When you get your raid team ready you want to first debuff, debuff everything you want to debuff and then switch straight to your main attacker. This part's going to be a little tedious, but all you'll be doing is using all your attack AP after buffing your own attack. Side note, you'll only need to fully buff your attack once before it's maxed out for the rest of the raid. When you run out of attacking AP, you can either squirm if your Morty is strong enough, or you can use a pure plutonic rock. Just to be clear, squirming is best for getting a little extra damage out. Do not risk it if your main isn't strong enough to survive it. You will only squirm a little before you use a pure plutonic rock. Then you want to repeat this until the item logout begins to block you. At this point just switch to your side slash the buffers to buy turns for your main attacker. Usually you'll get 8 rocks out, getting 9 out is hard to do but doable. This is a bit of an advanced strategy, but you can switch between two Mortys who are either tanky or equipped of a regeneration move. This can be done to get up to 10 rocks out or even start using blue rocks. However, this will take a very long time. For time's sake, only focus on trying to get 8 to 9 pure plutonic rocks out. There are 17 raid levels. The only difference between raid levels is how hard the raid boss hits. At level 1, you don't need to worry about buffing your own defense, but at level 17, you'll need to choose tanky Mortys that can deal damage and handle damage. The easiest way to solve this issue is sacrificing a weak type move for a defense buff for your Morty. This does eat into your potential damage, but it lets your Morty get all its AP out and possibly even squirm for extra damage. This question can be very complex or very simple. The two main measurements people use for raids is damage over time and how fast the raid is. DOT, damage over time, is where you try to get every single little bit of damage, while speed is trying to deal as much damage as fast as possible. Speed usually eats into your permits and DOT can eat into how much time you have. Speed can actually out damage you. It's best if you ask in the comments what the best Mortys for raids are. However, I'll give you some good ones. Gotron, an amazing main attacker that can be used both for DOT and speed. Trover, an amazing side attacker overall with incredible damage. Pancake, Pancake is a cheaper Gotron. It's one of the few Mortys with a typed regeneration move, which heals an incredible amount of HP. I grouped Princess and Queen together since they can both solo debuff the boss and can be used as tanks during raids. These two are a classic debuffing duo which can be found easily. They don't do the most damage but can be found easily and be used to debuff the boss. Another OP common for raids has an attack, evade, and defense buff all in one with some good paper moves. If you're quickly scrambling to find good raids to fight the raid boss, He's definitely one. This guy is another OP common with a powerful strong attack and defense buff in one move with two powerful rock moves. This guy can be used as a debuffer or a main attacker or even as a side attacker. He also has a strong attack and defense buff in one, so he's pretty awesome. 
He is a fast and deadly side who could also be used to debuff the raid boss. Only missing the accuracy buff, he is still an incredible raid mode degree defense buff which can be used for higher levels. And he also has one of the most powerful scissor moves in the game. Not the most powerful though. I am very well versed in the budget teams of Pocket Morty, so I'll be going over my most commonly used extreme budget teams I use for alts, which usually gets me the raid Morty. You gotta catch them at level 50 or higher to get all the moves. The higher you catch them, the better. You'll probably need to spend some tickets on them to get the right moves. You do not need the EV train budget teams. Just catch them at a high level, and that's all. I'll be going over universal debuffers, rock mains and sides, paper mains and sides, and scissor mains and sides in that order. Flannel and Goombi are the most commonly used here because of how easy they are to find. However, the real MVP here is Flannel. He is an attack, defense, and paralysis debuff, while Goombi only has an accuracy and evade. If you're doing budget and you're struggling to find the Goombi, there's plenty of Mortys out there with an accuracy and evade the debuff. Usually you want your debuffs to be able to deal decent damage, but on extreme budget, you can just focus on having your sides and mains do the most damage. The best budget side attacker for Rock is Helmet. There's plenty of other good ones, but this is the best budget you can find. Parade Morty is a pretty good main. He has a good regeneration. You'll want to use all your rocks on him. The best budget side is Crow. And there's a lot of budget mains you can use, washboard, rollerblades, wine boy, but the easiest to get is maple leaf. If you find any of these before maple leaf, catch it and it'll serve you well. Maple leaf is my favorite due to there being a defense buff in his regeneration. And he has two decent paper moves. Maple leaf is a tanky leaf. Scissors. Scissors has often gotten the short end of the stick for extreme budget. The best sides I've been able to find are stray cat and mullet. If you find any 40s, they work really well, but Stray Cat and Mullet are just easier to find. The best main is Infected Morty. There's a lot of raids, so here's just a list of every single raid Morty. There is Morty Jr., Amoeba, Hobo Santa, Mythologue, Good Boy, Dragon, Child of Gaia, Surgeon and Shadow were ad raids. Supernova, Bird Person, Supernova Party, Super Soldier, Star Fetus, Nightmare, Evil, and the One True Morty were ad raids, Old Man Huxby, and No Dinos. We'll be getting more raids next Rick and Morty season, so this will be slightly outdated by then. I recommend you use the Pocket Mortys wiki to look through Mortys and find good Mortys to use for raids. Or you can ask the community for some good ones, but only use type Mortys the boss is weak against. All bosses have a type. So if the boss is rock, use paper. If the pa if the boss is scissors, use rock. You get the point. Avoid using neutral typings because they don't do a lot the best damage. There's very few exceptions to this. Weak type moves with a lot of AP usually do more damage than neutral moves with more power but less AP. Not all Mortys and Cot will come with the right moves, so expect to spend tickets from modifying Mortys to have the correct ones. You might have noticed this video has included basics and avoided talking about complex stuff because raids can get very complex d depending how far you want to dive into them. So I'll be leaving a server in the description which you can use to explore the more complex side of this. Just to be warned, you will. there's lots of math in raids. Math that can be used to figure out the exact damage uh, Mortys will do, which Mortys are the best, specific teams with moves, how to use them, different types of Mortys, like instead of just deep buffers, side attackers, and main attackers. There's also tanks, and probably even more complex stuff which is not coming to mind currently. There's a lot. Which is why I haven't delved, dived into a lot of it, because it's just math, and lots of buck actuallys, and nope, we figured this out, it's just... be a little complex. But if you want to delve into that, it's, I'll have it in the description. Well, thank you for listening and watching the video. This video was made in partnership by me and my my friend, my my buddy, my little my little my little gal, uh, Mochi Toast. <laughs> okay, that's all.